The following program comes to you live from the Apostolic Church Ghana Community 5 Assembly. For more of this and other useful resources, log on to TACC5.org or like our Facebook and YouTube pages at TACC5 Media. God bless you. Deliver. He has become our deliverer. 
It is because of his salvation. He saved us when we had no idea about it. We bless you, O oh Lord. We honor you, O oh God. So, how great is our God. With me, how great is our God, and all will sing how great, how great is our God. We want to sing how great, say, how great, how great is our God. Let's 
God of your rulership. You are great and greatly to be praised. You are great and greatly to be praised. We honor you this morning. We celebrate your greatness for who you are. For who you are. We celebrate you for who you are. We honor you for who you are. We declare your awesomeness for who you are. We bow down before you. And we say there is none greater than you are. Oh Jesus, what a great God you are. What a great God you are. What a great God you are. Your name Abel on me. You are worthy of our praise. And our hearts will see how great. Your name is above all other names. Your name is greater than all things, Lord. You are great, you are great, you are great. There is none greater than you. Oh, we honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. You are great, you are great. You are great. You are great. You are great, you are great. Yeah. Father, you are great, you are great. Let your heart worship him. Let your heart worship. Let your heart worship him. Tell him how great he is. When I look at the works of your hands, oh God. All that I can say is that you are great, oh God. For you do what no man can do. So you are, you are great. Yeah, you are great. Oh, we worship. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. God, we honor you, O God. There is no one like you, O Lord. There is no one like you, Lord. There is no one like you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Be thou exalted, O oh God. Be thou exalted. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. From January to now, you just want to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And give the Lord a clap. That you are alive this day. You just want to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. The Lord has been so good. So we want to agree with the psalmist. He said, you've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Now If I have 10,000 tongues, it still would be enough. You want to sing it with joy. Has God done so much for you? You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. We say, hey. Hey. If I have 10,000 tons, it still won't be enough. We say, What's 
Hallelujah. Muti wa kwa wimujum. Matuna, Mabakran, Trasinuaye, 
Let me come for you and share that with you. Let me come for you and share that with you. Let me come for you and share that with you. the Lord. We are grateful to God once again for bringing us together as a family. We take this opportunity to welcome those who are worshiping with us for the very first time and also for our online viewers as well. We say that you're most welcome. Thank you very much for choosing to worship with us this morning. This week is Christmas week. Hallelujah. Can you tell your friend Afishapa Look at the person left, on the right, and say a fish apart to the person. God has been merciful, isn't it? In a way back when we were children, we used to look forward to Christmas a lot. Because you are sure that you would get your bottle of Fanta and your Piccadilly biscuits, is that right? And you are sure that um, some chicken or some goat somewhere would suffer the consequence. Is that right? But these days, when you become an adult, sometimes you don't look forward to Christmas, is it? When you look at the pressures and the stresses on you and the list of things you have to accomplish, sometimes it becomes more burdensome than something to enjoy. But Christ is the reason for the celebration. And we want to encourage everybody who is here that as we go towards this Christmas, you will remember our folks back home. We'll also remember those who don't have anything to celebrate Christmas. And we'll also remember those who have no opportunity to give anything to you. So that we will, we'll remind them that Christ is the reason for the celebration. Praise the Lord. So as we celebrate the, the Christmas in the city, let us remember those who are in the villages and those 
who have no reason to celebrate the Christmas. So that at the end of the day, Christ will be the reason for the season. Hallelujah. Our plate is full a lot today. There's a lot we have to do. But we will start with the naming. God has been gracious to us. Hallelujah. And the prophecy in this house is that none shall be barren. If the family of Nkunim Ampon is here, the family of Ampon is here, if they can kindly walk to the front. We've got a baby to name. For unto us, a child is born. And to us, a son is given. Can we put our hands together for the Ampon family? And please, friends and relatives can join them up front whilst we go through the process. Hallelujah. None shall be barren in the house. Oh. I'm saying none shall be barren in the house. Amen. I like that. We are praying over the name. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are grateful to you for this day. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We want to pray committing this name into your hands. We pray and dip this name into the blood of Jesus Christ. So wherever this name is mentioned, Father, you shall reign supreme. We pray for the parents, and we pray for how far you've brought them. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God so much. The name the parents have brought, and we consenting to it, to be given to this wonderful boy in my arms, is Aaron Kwesi. In Kunim Ampon. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we all mention it together? Aaron. As, as I'm coming, as we mention this name, we are establishing this name in the spiritual realms. Hallelujah. And we are, by our declaration, we are declaring that this name shall stand for victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we go together? Aaron. Kwesi. In Kunim Ampon. Let's go for the second time. Aaron, Kwesi in Kunim Ampon. Last time? Aaron, yes, Lord. Shall we pray for Aaron? Heavenly Father, you gave us this opportunity to name the things you created. By this opportunity and by this privilege and by this, by this authority that you've given unto us, we've named this child Aaron Kwesi and we declare and decree in Jesus' name that this name shall stand for victory. Aaron, we declare in the name of Jesus that any time your name is mentioned, it is mentioned for a good reason, in the name of Jesus. If by chance somebody decides to use this name for anything against you, we decree this morning, we declare this morning, that it shall never stand. It shall never see the light of day. It shall never come to fruition. Because the Lord shall be your portion. Because your, the Lord shall be your protector. Because the Lord, your God, the God of your fathers, shall go ahead of you. I declare that victory is assured for you. Whatever you find your hands doing under this earth, I declare it shall be successful. Ah, I pray in Jesus' name. If in case somebody contends with you concerning something, because the Lord is on your side, you will win. You will win in the name of Jesus. This morning, we plant that seed of greatness into your system. Oh, yes, Lord. We plant that seed of greatness into your system. Things that fight against people and cut their life short shall not be your portion. They shall never come near your dwelling. When you go out, you shall be blessed. 
When you come in, you shall be blessed. Aaron, be blessed of the Lord. We declare that it is so in Jesus' name. Because the word of the Lord declares goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. I call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Papa, I present Aaron and Kunim unto you and I charge you that you take very good care of him. You water the seed that we've planted that it will bear more fruit. I pray that God grant you what it takes. If it is money, God grant you money. If it is wisdom, God grant you wisdom to be able to take care of Aaron. Amen. Oh, congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Ampong. Can we put our hands together for them? We have a couple of announcements. We'll go, them, we'll go through them quickly so that multimedia will continue from there. The constitution of the Apostolic Church and the calendar for the Apostolic Church for 2021 is available. The calendar is seven cities. The constitution, the constitution goes for 15 cities. So we have a copy of the constitution here. We are all encouraged to go to the market index so that we can get a copy for ourselves. We need to read it so that we'll know how the church is governed. Hallelujah. It is 15 Ghana cities. The calendar is here. It's very beautiful, very colorful. We are encouraging everybody to buy one and buy one for a friend. It is just seven cities. So make sure that when we close, you go to the market index and make sure that you get one for yourself, for friends, and for family. Hallelujah. Multimedia, if we can have the announcement, please. Mr. and Mrs. Ampon have their envelope and thanksgiving to the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a season not only of rejoicing, but of reflection. Welcome to church. Meetings. There will be discipleship classes after the first service. January bonds up. It's a season not only of rejoicing, but of reflection. Welcome to church. Meetings. There will be discipleship classes after the first service. January bonds are meeting after each service. Bonds. Sister Millicent Ejakwa of this assembly and Brother Joseph Kwesi Gansa of Good Shepherd Catholic Church will be joined in holy matrimony on 22nd December 2020 at the Good Shepherd Catholic Church at 12 noon. Sister Elizabeth Tetanati of this assembly and Brother Meshach Odoyamo also of this assembly will be joined in holy matrimony on 2nd January 2021 at 1pm 1 in this auditorium. Dedication of Children There will be dedication of children next Sunday 27 December 2020 at 1.30 p.m. in this auditorium. Orientation for parents comes of today at 3 p.m. 31st Watch Night Service This year's 31st Watch Night Service dubbed Community Watch Night Service comes off on Thursday 31st December 2020 at the Star Basic School Park with song ministration by the C5 Praise and Worship Team. Time is 8 p.m. prompt. Eureka Encounter Eureka Encounter is here again and the Lasady Foundation presents Eureka Encounter 2021. This program comes off on 1st January 2021 at 3 p.m. right here in this auditorium. The theme for this year's edition is Live Out Loud. If you still haven't got your souvenirs and tickets yet, please go to the Lasady office or the marketing office and grab one for yourself and one for a friend. Tickets go for 10 Ghana cities. T-shirts go for 25 Ghana cities. Tickets together with T-shirts go for 30 Ghana cities. Marketing. Sermons recorded on CDs, 
2021 calendar, the Apostolic Church Constitution and other church paraphernalia are available for sale at the marketing office located downstairs. They are open for business at the close of each service. Now, the week's activities. On Monday to Friday, we have a morning devotion every morning at 4.30 a.m. right here in this auditorium. On Tuesday, it's a movement day at 6.30 p.m. On Wednesday is a post of virtual cup. On Friday morning also is the post of virtual cup. On Friday evening again is the post of virtual cup and on Saturday the post of virtual cup continues. On Sunday we have all three services. Adult service is at 6:45 a.m. English for the first service. Second English service is at 9 a.m. That service which is three is at 11 a.m. Youth service is at 6.45 a.m. while seeker service is at 9 a.m. Thank you for your attention. Do enjoy the rest of the service. We have come to Apostle Camp Meeting 2020 is here. Beginning from Wednesday the 23rd to Sunday the 27th of December 2020. This year's edition is power packed with anointed men of God, including Apostle Aaron Amina, President of the Apostolic Church Ghana, Apostle Abraham Oforikuregu, Apostle National Superintendent, Apostle Professor Opoku Onyina, Immediate Past Chairman, Church of Pentecost, Pastor Andrews Norte, Apostle National Leader, Pastor David Lamte, and many others. The theme is Redigging the Wells of the Fathers. Genesis chapter 26 verse 18. The life-changing activities lined up are Time with the Fathers, School of Ministry and Leadership, Kids TV, Inspirational Talks, Teens Hour, Faith Clinic, and Hour of Breakthrough. It's a virtual experience. Join us live on YouTube at the Apostolic Heritage, Facebook at Aposa Camp Meeting, and on Instagram at Aposa GH underscore national. To watch the live sessions, visit any of our centers near you. You can also book a seat to participate in the live sessions at the Apostolic Church Ghana Tema C5. For registration, visit www.apostleghana.com. Call 0208-256-535 or 0540-119-815 for further information. Remember, it's from the 23rd to the 27th of December. Aposa Camp Meeting 2020. It's a virtual experience. Aposa. Arise and build. As believers, sometimes we will get to difficult times in our lives. The title of our episode tonight is God of the Valley. When we are talking about valley moments in the life of a believer, we are talking at the moment or the times when you are going through trials and temptations. Very difficult ones. That sometimes you feel God has even rejected you. It is part of the Christian walk. You may find yourself in those situations one way or the other, like they did. Amen. But the lesson here is that when they were down there, with the support of the family, they went to God in prayer. And no, and no, Pam Pontina said, We are sorry, me, we are member. Waha, Omodia said, What do you hope that will be another group? So now, what sorry, me will be moving. Now, a two near a dear, and we are no words of encouragement. Nina Mampo, which we are a day, I'm wow, more to me, a jina. You bet me a wow or empire, if you say, Near me, you are hot. So, one poor old swan, why she here? Near says, I told me a day, a betrothal. Now, and not to know your midday members in your nummy a shrine. So, when we find ourselves in valley moments, say, yeah, you bet me any support and encouragement from the rest of the family members, they are called on your mincha empire. And so, when it is difficult, Turn to God in prayer. He will come through for you. Amen. 1st January will soon be here with us and with it will be your favorite New Year's event, Eureka Encounter 2021. 
happening live at the main auditorium of the Apostolic Church Ghana C5 Assembly Tema at 3 p.m. This edition is under the theme Live Out Loud. Speakers are engineer Stephen Ejelaye, Mami Awinado, and Jeremiah Boabin. Also on the bill will be captivating choreography with live performance by Akese Brimpo and Jaif Annie. Your MCs will be Lexi the Comic and Clemento Suarez. Tickets and t-shirts are available for grabs at cool prices. This edition will certainly be big, exciting and mind-busting. So don't forget, the date is 1st January 2021 and the time is 3 p.m. It's happening live at the Apostolic Church Ghana Community 5 Assembly. For further information, kindly call the following numbers. Eureka Encounter 2021 Live Out Loud This event is organized by the Lesady Foundation and powered by TACC5 Multimedia. Lesady Foundation Transforming Lives A program to support a worthy cause. Hallelujah. We are also reminded about a, a post camp meeting from the 23rd to the 27th of December. Um, it's going to be virtual, but if you want to be here physically, you will need to register so that they can accommodate you. Hallelujah. Um, in terms of Thanksgiving, Mr. and Mrs. J.K. Kwanza are celebrating eight years in marriage with two beautiful and lovely daughters. Can we put our hands together for the Lord? They are grateful to God for how far he's brought them, and they are trusting God to take them through the entire journey. Hallelujah. They give thanks with an envelope unto the Lord. We have a couple of Alke announcements. The father of our member, Victoria Saki, has been called to glory. Victoria Saki is a June born. Our service will take place on Saturday, the 6th of February, 2001, at Old Ningo. If our sister Victoria is here, uh, is she here, please? If she can join me upstairs so that we will be able to know her. Okay, there she comes. Can we put our hands together for her as she comes? <laughs> Our sister Victoria Saki is a June born. We have called here for two main reasons. For us to be able to commensurate with her at this time, to visit her and encourage her in these times, and also, we know that Seyeba and Akaba, if there's any donation we can give to her to support this particular venture, it is most welcome. Sister Victoria, you may take your seat. Thank you for coming as well. Our sister, Mrs. Sherry Obeya Palu, has also lost her mother. Hallelujah. Um, Sherry Obiapalo is the wife of um, our brother, Captain. Um, everybody knows him as Captain. So Captain has lost his in-law. So we want, in the same vein, for us to... Hallelujah. For, for us to encourage her and for us to be able to speak words of encouragement unto her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've got a very important part of the service. We're going to have our fights and our thanksgiving offering. We have a covenant relationship with the Lord, which tells us that if we give our 10%, the Lord will open the windows of heaven and pour out his blessings upon us. We also know that the, the Lord will rebuke the devil for our sake. Within the week, as the Lord took you out and brought you back in, if you have anything to give thanks to the Lord, the fact that you sit here is a reason to thank God. So praise and worship will lead us. We are not coming in any specific order. We'll just walk boldly and put our thighs and offering into the bowl. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So our sweet Jesus is in our midst this morning. Amen. And we want to declare to him that he's more than gold to us. Amen.
Jesus You're the wind beneath my wings Sweet Jesus You're my melody and harmony Sweet Jesus You're the eyes that I see through Sweet Jesus Yes, I'm dancing to your tune As the deep ones for water so My soul longs for you Forever and ever, yes This heart beats for you As the deep ones for water so My soul longs for you Forever and ever, yes This heart beats for you Something more than God than gold, something more than gold, I've got something more than gold, if all I've got is Jesus, I've got something more than gold, and I'll tell it to the world, Jesus is more than gold, something more than gold, I've got something more than gold, something more than gold, I've got something more than gold. All I've got is Jesus I've got something more than gold And I'll tell it to the world Jesus is more than gold More than gold, more than gold I've got something more than gold And I'll tell it to the world Jesus is more than gold More than gold, more than gold I've got something more than gold And I'll tell it to the world Jesus is more than gold He is more than gold More than anything you could ever ask for Everything I ever want He 
es poderoso. Let's pray. We will give thanks unto the Lord for his good and his mercies endureth forever. Father, we thank you for the privilege given us that this day we bring our thanks and adoration through our thanks and offering and thanksgiving. You are the Lord, let your name be glorified. A God of covenant. And Father, in our fulfillment of our part of the covenant, is to present that which Lord you have given to us. You have been with us. You have, O oh Lord Jesus, bless us in all our endeavors. The eye of the Lord is upon the righteous and he is uh, open unto their cry. Father, you have been so faithful. And so in time like this, Lord, we pray that you bless that which we have presented unto you. Father, we bring this as an investment into your kingdom. Father, you are God of Father much more. Bless that which you have given, that it will be fruitful, so that your name be glorified. Father, we pray for the, the families who have made this presentation. You know us by name, and so Lord, we pray that your blessings will reach out to every family. Father, as the year is drawing to an end, we know that Lord, we will meet with you, and all the promises that have been given to us will be fulfilled. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you very much, praise and worship team. Thank you very much, Reverend Kakari. We've got to a, a very important segment in this uh, service this morning. I think I've said here before that some people come to church, not because I send men as of a as a media man to you. Please let it not be said of us. It's time for word ministration. So please listen with rapt attention. Catch something that the Lord has prepared for you. Ladies and gentlemen, ministering today is our district pastor, Reverend Andrews Norte. Can we put our hands together for him? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope everyone is doing well. And I trust God that you are expectant that the Lord will give you, do you good. We have a few days, like 11 days to the end of the year. Not too sure whether you think that your testimonies for 2020 are intact. But if they are not yet around and they are not yet intact... I still want to encourage you to keep hope alive because you are serving a God that is not limited by time or space and he can spin something around just in a nick of time. If you are sure that the Lord is promised to do something this year, you can still trust that the Lord will do it. Put your hands together if you understand that. I love that one. Yeah. I am confident that you went into 2021 with a testimony and the Lord would have put a new song on our lips. This morning, I want us to look at the Christmas story in a very different light. And I trust that, in fact, my objective and my prayer is that it should generate new levels of gratitude. As we relook and rethink the Christmas story. And so today I want us to read, and our passage that we'll be looking at is the popular Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to the end. And I am of the opinion, um, more, more modern translations of the Bible do not use the old and the classical title or heading that men have given to that passage. The old and the classical title to that story is what you call the prodigal son. More modern translations will talk about the lost son. But today, I want to retitle that passage my own way. 
And that is the title of the message I want to share with you. I call it the prodigal father. The prodigal father. Kindly bow down your heads and let's pray. Thank you, Father. We have every reason to thank you. We thank you for the prodigality that you show towards us. This morning as we come into your word, I pray for utterance. I pray for utterance, Lord. That your word will bring illumination. Your word will bring a lifting up. And the word that you are sending to your people will prosper in everything wherein you have sent it. That it shall not return unto you void. Thank you for the prosperity of your word. In Jesus name. Amen. The prodigal father. So it has popularly been called the prodigal son. And the reason more often than not we call it the prodigal son is because attention have been paid so much to the behavior and the attitude of the son. And it appears that we are missing the behavior and the attitude of the father. If you look at the context of the story, I think that the attitude and behavior of the father is more pronounced than that of the son when we talk about prodigality what does it mean to be prodigal prodigal means okay so as an adjective prodigal means you are using resources freely and extravagantly using resources freely and extravagantly so when we say you have been too prodigal it means that you are spending anyhow you spending anyhow it also means giving something on a lavish scale giving something on a lavish scale you, you don't really care i visited a big man a big man somewhere not in this country, but in, um, in another African country. A friend took me to this big man. He's a minister. And we went for a program there. We were just leaving. They said, oh, the big man is in the office. Let's go and greet him before you go to the airport. And then the big man has been looking or seeking opportunity to bless this young man for some time. He has a very huge office. I have never seen office that big. I think we walked for almost a minute from the entrance before we got to where he was seated. Huge. The office can be an auditorium for a church service. And when he saw the boy, he said, Ah, where have you been? I've been looking for you. He said, Papa, I've been around, but uh, such and such a thing. That's why I have not come back today. I have come to Greece. He said, I have been looking for you to do something. So where you he pulled his drawer. I have not seen that before. He took a polythene bag and started taking money in bundles from his drawer. Like they, he never counted it. And when the bag was full, he said, come my son. He gave it to him. This one is a prodigal father. He didn't count the money. No one told me. I saw it myself. So immediately I started praying. Is he going to take the second polythene bag? Like. <laughs> but that day I was not on his radar. I said now a person who spends in a recklessly and extravagant way. Reckless. Reckless expenditure. That is what it means to be prodigal. So I am saying this. That we are going to look at the prodigality of the son and look at the prodigality of the father. And then we will wait to find out which of the two of them was more prodigal in this story. Which of them? So let's begin the journey. 
What did the Bible say about the prodigality of the son in the story? Luke chapter 15, 11 to the end. We are familiar with the story. And so I don't want us to spend so much time on that. But it begins by telling us that a certain man had two sons. How many sons? How many? And the younger, not the older. The story is very intentional. So that we could see how prodigal the father was. And sometimes we read it with a different eye. And so we are unable to see that. The culture of the time. The culture of that time. And indeed with the Jewish people. Jesus and his family. And his descendants and his people. Those who have descended from Abraham. The culture was simple at the time. The firstborn always is supposed to take a 90% of the father's inheritance. 90%. And the 10% he shared, even if he has 15 children, first boy takes 90%. The 10% will be shared for the rest. But he's supposed to hold the 90% in trust for the rest of the family because as soon as the father dies, he becomes the father. And so, it's like he just takes the entire property so that he will run the family on behalf of the dead father. Second borns and third born boys don't dare dream of the property. So for this boy to go to the father and say, give me my share of the property was an affront. It, it, it's like an insult. It's something that he shouldn't have dreamt of. But he went to the father and he said, give me my share. And he took his share. In any case, what the father gave him was his own share. What would have come to him when the father died? Just that the father was not yet dead, but he took it. It was his share. The Bible said that he spent his life in riotous living. That is where the prodigality came into the picture. That's all. That what he took from the father, he just spent it anyhow. He called French, Ali, let's go here, let's go there, let's go there. By the time he realized, it's gone. And there are many, 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 many people in our times. And maybe somebody's even looking at me now. Who have had big monies and we have spent them in riotous living. The boy's behavior was not a novelty. And even though he certainly was not the first person to have spent that way, and right now, there are people who have read the story before and are still living their lives anyhow. I'm sure you might have had the opportunity to counsel a friend, one or two, and tell them, don't spend money like this. Do some savings. Today, banking institutions and financial institutions are still telling people, going to offices, co and forcing responsible men and women that you need to do investment and save for the future. Because people are living in riotous living. People are spending anyhow. Impulse buying, left, right thing. There are people who have so many shoes that there are shoes that for the past five years they have not worn. Very soon I'll be taking them from you. No, that's an announcement ahead of time. By March or April, any dress you have not used for the past one year, please iron them and bring them here. We'll take them all. Some other people need them. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. If you have not used it for a year, you certainly don't need it. Except it is a November bone shirt, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's one. Praise God. So, the young man just spent all that he had. And I'm saying that he was not the first and he's certainly not the last. That was all that was said about his prodigality. Nothing more. Look into the story. There is nothing more about his prodigality. All about prodigal that he, prodigality that he did in the story was that he took his own share. Today, he was prodigal because something that would have been bigger. You know, if you go to your bank, you, are, you have an investment. It is 100,000 Ghana cities. And you go and take it today and spend it today. 15 years time, you know that 100,000 will still not be 100,000. So what would have been something bigger in the future, he took it today and wasted it. So that is prodigality, that's fine. But I'm saying that that is all. Nothing more was said in the story about his prodigality. Now let's look at the prodigality of the father. And let's see which of the two was more prodigal. 
I'm going to posit the story in the context of the social world of the New Testament. The kind of society in which they lived and the understanding they have about the family setting. So just follow me. The son came to his father and said that give me my share of the property and listen to that story. What he's telling the father is that I should have waited for you to die but I can't wait. And I'm saying that that one alone is an insult. The father should start thinking about what to do to that boy. Now, in those days, your wealth is what determines your status. In those days, all men were not equal. Read the New Testament. You hear Apostle Paul talking about in Christ. Listen, when you want to make a difference, he said in Christ, there is no bond or free. In other words, out of Christ, there is the bond and there is the free. Bond means you are a slave. All human beings were not equal in those days. The social structure was clearly defined. There is no male or female, no Jew or Greek. But in those days, all those structures were there. If you get to a big house, all people do not have the same vote. In other words, in those days, if they were voting, some people could have 10 votes and others would have won. And some would not even have it because they were considered less than humans. The number of children you have and your wealth would determine your social status. When the boy pulled out of the house and divided his father's wealth, he has reduced his father's social status before the father died. And the father would have understood that carefully. He would have. The second thing he did was that he abandoned the family. And in those days, when a son or a child, anyone abandons the family, you become poor in a certain sense. There are two words in the New Testament, in the, in the Greek, that in the English are trans, translated poor. So when we read, we only see poor, poor. But in the original languages, there are two types of poverty. The first one they call penis. Penis is just a poor person who is living from hand to mouth. And it's okay, they appreciate that not everybody will be rich. So they are hardworking people, they, they go to the market, they just get what they'll get for the family today, and they go and eat. They were the kind of people who would have affected by the lockdown heavily. Because their business and their daily bread is dependent on their daily movement. And once there's a lockdown, no movement means no food. These were the people that society needed to send food aid and go and support them because... Without it, they were the people that the president of Ghana decided to be given hot meal, two hot meals a day. Because once there is lockdown and there were penis, there were people who live from hand to mouth and now they don't move, they cannot have what to eat. Most people, this lockdown did not affect them. Their salaries were intact, their allowances were intact, everything was intact. And some, even, this lockdown made them richer. Because they were still getting fuel allowance, but they were not driving to work. I think I should have checked your tight. I should have checked your tight. Your tight should have increased. All right. But this way, that is what they call penis. So when they, we read and we come across the Greek word penis, we will interpret it as poor. But there's another word for poverty. They call it tokos. Tokos is not just losing money or lacking wealth. Is losing social connection. When you are considered the tokos, that one is considered the case. That was the reason why when Jesus was preaching in Matthew 5 and was said, blessed are the poor, it was terrible because in their thinking, no tokos can be blessed. You cannot be a tokos and considered blessed. It is someone, you could be so rich, but society can give up on you that even if you have money, when you are going to buy, no one will sell it to you. That is how bad. And when you are selling, no one will buy. No one will greet you. You cannot greet anyone. And you lose all the social 
capital that you have. You are rejected. In our traditional settings, if you can see the society will have nothing to do with you. That was what happened to this guy when he decides to take his share and abandon the family. He reduced his father's social capital by, as having children by 50%. Father has only two. And then he left. And the father was left with one. That was how terrible this guy was. This is what he did to the father. What would have happened next to this boy is that his name would be deleted from the genealogy of the father. So when they are mentioning the genealogy of his family, and this one gave birth to this, and this one gave birth to this, when we get to his turn, his name will be taken out. Such that no one will even know there existed somebody like this who left the family house. It's a shame. So they will not mention him. So generations will come and they will never know that the man actually had two sons. They will think he only had one. Now this boy, having done all this to the father, Bible said that he came to his senses and he decided that I will go back to the father. Then look at the father. Look at the father. The Bible said that he sat down and one day, he looked far ahead and he saw the sun coming back. A typical you and I, whose son have done this, brought us the shame and disgrace and done all that. We have deleted his name from the genealogy, everything, we've done all that. And we have crossed our hearts that no one like that existed under the sun. Then one day, you sat down and you see him coming. Hey! And I'm sure you'll be shaking your head and say, who is that coming? You'll call everybody, hey, everybody, come, 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 come. Who is that? We'll call the dogs from the house. They might have forgotten him. But the father stood up. And what did he do? The first thing he did, Bible said he had compassion on him. That was wrong. That was completely wrong. Have compassion on a boy like this. What is wrong with you? No father in those days would have done that. No father. Absolutely no father would do this. Have compassion on a boy like this. No. Then the Bible said that he ran to meet him. Fathers in those days would not run. Even here. Even here. How many fathers ran to meet you, the small boy, will have to run to your father, not the father running to you. But while the boy was walking and coming, the father ran. That one too was too much. Then the Bible said, he embraced him. He shouldn't have gone near him. A tokos, someone who has been rejected by society. Nobody greeted him. Nobody even wanted to see them. And the father went, ran to him, had compassion on him and then embrace him. No. 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 And worst of all, he kissed him. He kissed this boy. And I'm sure the community would have come around and wondered what is wrong with this man then the son said father i'm sorry i'm sorry i know i know i don't deserve listen because he understood what he had done what that thing meant so he he just said what the right thing was said i know i don't deserve i know i don't belong but i am only pleading if it is possible and you will employ me as a servant I'm begging you. That was his request. And if the father said, okay, I will employ you as the, as the servant, the least paid servant, the boy would still would have been happy. He applied to be a servant. And the father said, application accepted, employed as a son. Applied to be a servant, employed as a son that was too much 
And then he took the boy home. And immediately removed the dirty robes and put a brand new, not just a brand new, but the best robe on him. Put a ring on his finger. He prepared a feast for him. And when he knew that the society and the community was confused, he wanted to explain his behavior. Listen to what the father said. Oh, you know, this is my son. He was dead. And he just woke up from death. What are you talking about? And he was lost. And he's now found. That is why I'm throwing the party. Oboa. This is prodigality of the highest order. The kind of love he lavished upon this boy was too much for the community, for the society, and for the time to come to terms with. It was so terrible that when the senior brother came and saw what has happened, he got angry with the father and deservedly so. Because the father was too prodigal in this matter. He complained. He said, you have not shown me this kind of love, even though I have been faithful to you all these years. The kind of love you have been showing me is like this. Then when this boy came back, see his love. So he got angry. This is the Christmas story. You and I were so sinful. You and I were so terrible. You and I were so rebellious. We walked away from God's presence as a result of the sin that we committed in Adam. And still today. And yet, as the import of the story is, it pleased the Father to give us the best that he has. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for you and I. This is prodigal father. Are you understanding what we are talking about? The love that God demonstrated to us was too much. We never deserved that. We never deserved this. We never deserved this. And he showed us this love in the giving of his only begotten son whose birth we are remembering this Christmas season. This is how I want you to look at the Christmas story and not an opportunity in the season where we wear fine dresses, fine shoes, and eat the best, increase our sugar levels, and increase our cholesterol levels, and endanger our health for 2021. I want you to reflect on the prodigal behavior of our Father in heaven towards us this Christmas season. And the issue is this. Having seen the prodigality of the father, how would you respond? Do you know how this boy would now behave in the house? Can you imagine how this boy would now behave in the house? He would behave as if, look, I'm, I'm sure when he sees the senior brother, he will look at him with his nose, his cheeks, everything down. And the senior brother would do this. Look at him some way. I don't know whether when they greet, they will even respond. But this guy will be walking carefully that he will not even step on an ant. Because he knows that the love that I have received and the new place that I have in this house, I don't deserve it. That is how prodigal the father has been. And how would you and I respond? The apostle Paul said this. He said, Jesus, he died for all. That those who live will no longer live for themselves, but will live for him who for our sake died and was raised up again on the third day. How would you respond to the prodigal nature of the father's love? And any time we think about Christmas, this is what it caused the father to make Christmas possible and available 
to us. This morning, I want to challenge you to think about how you want to respond to this prodigal father's behavior. And say how you, with your life, will tell God every day that I am grateful. Bow down your heads and let's pray. Oh Jesus, God of us ten tapa shekale mo santa nama koseki. The Apostle John says that we love him because he first loved us. How much do you love God? And how much do you appreciate that he has overloved us? If we were to measure how much we deserve, we will get nothing. We have been overloved. We have been overloved. And you want to pray and say, Father, I want to love you more. Just talk to the Father. Now, reflect on this and say, Lord, I now see how much love you have shown to me. Because this whole story is just about the fall of man and how God loved man back into his own household. You and I have been received into the household of the Father through the prodigality of the Father. And you want to say, Father, I thank you for the love that you have shown me. But I pray that I'll be able to love you more. I'll be able to love you more. I'll be able to, with my own life, show appreciation for what you have done. Oh, Shana Maka Seka da Hastana Mako Satabadi Astana Broka Daba Seke. Father. La ba de ka da ba ka zanta le be ho sheke ten de be de le ka doma de ya ka zenta ka ba le ako tan de be ko sheke le sataya ri ka tom be de is tan da ba sho ka da han zenta na ma konde ri ba de ka ha sa ne me ko sheke de Father, let us see the depth and the height and the length and the breadth and the width of your love, incomprehensible love that you have lavished towards us in the name of Jesus Raba de coste ne me momo shekate na makaya ka de be coste na ma shekate ka now if you are here and you want to surrender your life to the father remember when the son was coming it was the father who ran to meet the son God has his hands always open waiting for us to come back he will run to meet us he says if you draw nigh i will draw near if you are here and you have not yet made a decision to surrender your life to jesus maybe you love coming to church you love coming yes but you have not surrendered your life yet you have not owned up you have not said lord be the lord of my life father be master over my life if you have not this morning i want to give you the opportunity if you are here you want to give your life to jesus i want you to lift up your hand with me so i'll pray with you right now thank you is there any other person god bless you god bless you oh god bless you so much is there any other person please if you are here this is a wonderful opportunity if the father can you imagine that the father was running to meet this boy and then and then and then the boy will say get away from me no thank you brother god bless you if you are here again you want to give your life to jesus let me see your hand up please and let me pray with you okay god bless you brother i want you to pray this prayer with me right now you want to pray this prayer with me say lord jesus I thank you that you love me. I know I do not deserve this love. But today, like the prodigal son, I reject my old life and I embrace yours. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. 
take control of my life be my lord now and forevermore amen god bless you brother i would like to meet you after church okay god bless you so much and have a chat with you god bless you put your hands together for jesus and let's welcome Oh, can we, we can do it better unto the Lord. The prodigal father. What is our response? What do we say to our district pastor? Oh, take uh, offer tree this morning. If um, they can please bring the round circular bowls. We also want to remind us about our male kit, my kids are dead. Um, it's something, it's a covenant we have with the Lord to give 10% of our additional income to the Lord. We also need a basket for our little in Kunim, who was named this morning. Um, we would ask the December bonds. December bonds, are you in the house? Oh yes, you've been doing a fantastic job. Please, let's put our hands together for December Bond. Praise and worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, our humbly ask us to be on our feet. Even as we bless God with our offering. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, you are Alpha and Omega. Worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. You are Alpha. Hey, and Omega. We worship, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all. Oh, 
So, the, as part of the fundraising, I'm told some people wanted to give some cash, 50, 100, 200, 500, and the stuff. And so, what we are going to do is that when we close service, there will be receptacles at the various exit points. Whatever you want to support this course with, kindly drop it in there. And also, existing auditorium we will not be using this particular exit. We'll use the one here and then the one here, so that those on the mezzanine floor will come from the back. Shall we please be upstanding whilst we bring the service to a close? I want to saw me more. So I saw me coming to a close I just want to tell somebody that God will take care of you I just want to remind somebody that if you are a Christian and you belong to this family you are not alone the Lord is with you we've heard stories of some of us sick 
others having gone through surgeries some people having one issue or the other in their homes and families and other stuff I, I just want you to know that you will come through all of it and you will see 31st and you will see 1st January also if Jesus tarries so I as we pray right now the Lord is sending healing to as many that are sick in any part of their bodies those who are afraid of something the Lord is taking away the fear and it's giving you the assurance that he is with you. You and every member of your family will see the end of this year. If you are without hope and you don't know how this Christmas is going to be like with you and your family, I just want to assure you that help is coming your way. Help is coming somebody's way. I don't know who this is for, but help is coming somebody's way. You will hear some good news. You see, we, we won't serve God just like that. It must be evident in our lives. And people will see and ask, how did it happen? And they will tell them that it is the doing of the Lord. And it is marvelous in our sight. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you. And as this year draws close to an end, may you experience some peace that you cannot explain. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have been here. God bless you so much. Thank you for joining us today. We trust that you have been blessed by doing so. Join us again next time. For more information on our activities as a church, visit our website at tacc5.org or follow us on Facebook and YouTube using the handle at tacc 5 media Rest assured in the goodness of the God who gives us victory and makes provision for our daily needs. See you again next time. God bless you.